ready to rush to the front lines. And depending on your view, he's also been described as a conservative propagandist and a Tea Party loyalist. His new book is called Righteous Indignation, Excuse Me While I Save the World. Not a very modest title. In the book, you will find scarcely a word about one of his most infamous episodes involving Shirley Sherrod, the former USDA official fired after a video of her was posted on a Breitbart website. Sherrod is now suing Breitbart for accusing her of racism after showing, quote, a deceptively edited clip. And I'm delighted to say that Andrew Breitbart joins us now. Good afternoon, sir. Well, I don't accept the premise. But let me move forward. In your book, which I've read, mm -hmm. you write, I'm not religious and I'm certainly no theologian, but if there's one thing in religion that speaks to me, it is the idea of absolute truth. Mm -hmm. We start by uncovering the truth and telling everyone about it. Mm -hmm. So that's your, those are your words. Absolutely. So let's start then with establishing a single important truth. Did you watch the entire video of Shirley Sherrod's speech before you posted what were 136 seconds of it online? No. Was that a responsible thing to do as a journalist? who is concerned to excavate you, I, I, the truth. I guarantee you that every single day MSNBC does that all the time. I, I mean, in fact, MSNBC was the place that cut off a black person's head and said that the Tea Party was racist because they were coming to uh, tea parties with guns on them, and MSNBC cut the actual I, guy, and, I, the guy I, was, and the guy was black. Sure. Is, Andrew, that I, I, is that truthful I, I, journalism? I, I, I wasn't here, and, and okay. I don't, well, I don't well, know I'm the details. I go, well, look, sure. uh, the, I, thing I, is, the thing is that the, the can, can I just Let's go back to the point. Though. I will just, go, just, I'll just, go back to just, the point. Just back to the point. The actual speech was 43 minutes long. Right. Was it remiss, was it remiss, on reflection, to post 136 seconds of that speech? People put clips up all the time, and that clip explained something very important that even include her, included her, her narrative of realizing it's not about black versus white, it's about rich versus poor. And you know who came to my defense during that period of time, and I still to this day haven't thanked him for that? It was Chris Matthews, and he flummoxed Howard Dean and Salon's Joan Walsh, and included in the piece that every Everybody took selectively edited out of context in the piece that went with two videos I wrote eventually her basic humanity informs her to help the white farmer what happened is is that other media took it and cut off that part and talked about it on TV okay. and so I ended up being a captive to the fact that other people selectively edited out my entire 1400 at, word at, argument at the, time, that yes. at the time that you posted the excerpt yes. 136 seconds you wrote, Shirley Sherrod had, quotes, racially discriminated against a white farmer. Read the whole. Why uh, are you I, selectively editing out sorry, the I, entire can I just, piece? Can yes. I just finish? Sure. And that the NAACP audience approved with murmurs of recognition and agreement. Quote. Now, we have you saying something similar on camera. Let's take a look. I think that the clip as it exists proved precisely the news point that needed to be made. What was that news point? I had been battling the NAACP against the false allegation that the Tea Party is racist. The entire 14-word piece makes that argument. That I hit the target, the NAACP, is affirmed in Shirley Sherrod's, in Shirley Sherrod's day one statement where she said, this is the NAACP's fault, and, she, and, she said, and the NAACP apologized for the audience's reaction. It's significant that they apologized for the audience's reaction because the NAACP's head Ben Jealous for the week before attacked the Tea Party based upon the false premise that it yelled the N-word at Congressman Carson and Lewis. I have four videos that show that it didn't happen. Let's and go, N let, NBC let, will not show those sorry, videos. Andrew, yeah. let's, let's just stay mm -hmm. focused. You said in your original text in that video, Miss Sherrod, I'm quoting you, admits that she discriminates against people due R to read their it race. Precisely, yes. That's what I in, in, in now, the piece hang on, hang, she hang on, did. And Please, audience please, react please allow me to, okay. to, to explain what I'm going to put to you. That was the diametric opposite truth of what she said. What she actually said was that 
she went on to go out of her way to assist and her experience was, in, was an example of not discriminating okay, now, on now, the basis what, of race. What, uh, Martin, Why do you Martin, put, Miss Sherrod admits that she discriminates against people due to their race. That's a deliberate misrepresentation no, of the truth. I wrote in the piece that eventually her basic humanity informs her to help the white farmer. Andrew, and I'm I kept quoting I, your and, words. Yes, and read the rest of the piece. How can you claim in your book to be so committed to truth telling? I just telling? told you the How truth. can you do I that just told you the when truth. you publish something? You don't want to hear what I just told I, I, you. you I'm listening to you, sir. I told you eventually her basic humanity informed her to help the white farmer, and I kept in the part of the ark. The whole point was to show that the NAACP has no right to judge the Tea Party on racism if it keep its so, own house in order. So that was the point of it. That was the point of the clip. So if your and work was so balanced, why was she forced to resign? Who said that it was balanced? That's what you're just arguing. I'm not, I, I, I came with a point to show that the NAACP was in no position to judge the, 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 the Tea Party. That is exactly what happened. And listen to me. The, nobody went after, even nobody went after Andrew, President Andrew, Obama. Even, even, even Glenn, after, can I, can I just yes. even Glenn Glenn Beck, even Glenn Beck, who yeah. happily believes the notion that an Islamic caliphate is being constructed, in his words, from New Zealand uh -huh. to Nairobi, even he says that you deliberately misrepresented. Well, he's lying, and Shirley the reason the Shirley. reason why he did. He's he, right, isn't he? He insinuated on the. You misrepresented. Uh, her. Do you want me to answer the question? Please do. Did you he misrepresent he went up, he, I'm answering, listen to me. Glenn Beck said Andrew needs to apologize. He insinuated that he didn't touch the story. They said that the reason why the White House fired her was because they were worried that she was going to be, that this was going to be on the Glenn Beck show. Glenn Beck, in fact, ripped into Shirley Sherrod in his morning radio show. He was the one that diverted the attention away from the context, which was the NAACP angle, and made it about Shirley Sherrod. And That's he, an and, interesting and, argument. And in, and in his, and on his the air he cut out the part where she said that I kept in the video that said it's not about black versus white it's about rich versus poor which is her redemptive arc which compliments which was in the piece that said eventually her humanity informed her to help the white farmer answer me why the president of the United States when he was told that she helped the white farmer did not rehire her it took another day for that to happen the reason why uh, this happened MSNBC told me. They said Andrew Breitbart oh, really? was responsible for uh, black farmers in the law. Let, let's go back to your you book. You don't want to know the I, truth. Of course I do, Andrew. You don't. Let, let's go back to the book. Uh, in the book, you say that one of the biggest influences on your intellectual and social development is a man you call Professor Rush Limbaugh. Is that right? Uh, yes, he was yeah. very influential. Okay. Now, you know that Mr. Limbaugh quite recently did a, some would call humorous, others would say offensive impersonation of the Prime Minister of China. You also have asked Kevin, Kevin Pezzi to write for BigGovernment.com. Oh my gosh, you really are getting your can Media I, Matters talking I, points. Can I just go yes. with you to this? Uh, he once also, I found out sorry. about who Kevin Pezzi was, he yeah. submitted a piece. Can I just, we, sorry, we, Andrew, He submitted a Andrew, piece. Can I just, the second we found out allow about me, him, allow me just we to got finish. rid of him. Allow me to finish. <laughs> Mr. Pezzi, as you know, likes to use racist epithets yes. like Japs and chinks. He yeah. also maintains that African Americans should be grateful for being yeah, subjugated. It's deplorable. It's here's, deplorable. Here's, it's deplorable. Here's it's deplorable, Andrew, Martin. The, why are you doing guilt by association? Because here's the point I'm You're trying to make. You're selectively editing no, out the fact I'm that I got rid of him once I'm, I found out about that. I had never met Andrew, him before, and he submitted yeah. an article, and you are selectively no, editing history right allow now. Allow me to take you back to what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. You take 136 seconds mm -hmm. and post it. You then employ an individual who takes views like that, or use an individual I didn't who has employ, views. He was, so, he was a blogger. Sorry, there forgive me. Of you, people. you use his views, and now you just Why said you fired you him. What? You just we said didn't, you, I didn't fire him. That's what you just he said. Was a, he was a blogger who right? posted something at my site. Once I found out w what this guy was about. I got rid of him right. immediately, and I took the the piece off of the site. I'm trying, you want to do guilt by association? No, what, what I'm trying right to do now. is I'm trying to follow the narrative of your own yes. book. And uh -huh. what I'm saying is, we have what have I Shirley not told Sherrod, the truth about? What have we've I had, not told the truth about? We've had Rush Limbaugh. Let me what, just get, what have I not told I'll, the truth about? I'm ask, I'm what have you, I not I, told I, the I want, truth about? You started this off. I want to ask okay, you a question. What have I not told the truth about? Let me ask you a question. This week, Obama dressed and in a family of apes.
Are you asking me about this? What do I have to do with it? I want it? to ask you, what do you think of that image? It's deplorable. It's, it's deplorable. It's reprehensible. And you're trying to when create, you're trying to insinuate that I'm a racist here, which is what MSNBC does to conservatives every single day. This entire context of this conversation is what the NAACP and what the Democratic Party has been doing to Andrew, the I Tea Party for the last spoken, year. I haven't spoken to anyone. And the entire why context didn't you, of this, the why subtext didn't you, of this Andrew, why didn't you, when you published Shirley Sherrod's comments, the 136 seconds, and your voluminous article, as you rightly point out, why didn't you stand up and defend her and say, actually, she's not a racist? Why did you write things like, she's racially, racially discriminated against a because white farmer? Because the rest of the video showed different things that, that, were, uh, that illuminated something uh, that, that was not as black and white right. as so you would like, like we, we, what you'd like we to We use some bits and of the information said, and, and she, we don't no, use no, others. No, no, she said That's what that we I, do. She, why, why don't you hold her accountable for saying that I wanted to bring black people black to, back to slavery? She, on day one, said this was the NAACP's fault. A week later, she said, this has nothing to do with the NAACP. This is about Andrew Breitbart. She got, somebody told her, we need to target Andrew Breitbart at this point. She, on day one, the NAACP understood perfectly well what the context of this video was. And I successfully stopped their waging the campaign that MSNBC was party to, to try to falsely frame the race, Andrew, the part Andrew, of the Tea Party as racist. I wasn't, I wasn't I'm, not, I'm not talking let about me, MSNBC. Let me, let me move you on to the book. I'm, I'm trying to focus on your book. I'm pulling out material from your book. Uh, in the book, you talk about uh, bloggers, citizen journalists, who have implied that the president's autobiography, uh, Dreams from My Father, was mm -hmm. written by, quote, I'm quoting, the domestic terrorist Belairs. Yes. I think that that's, uh, that, first of all, is that's... Is there any evidence, it is, is there any the evidence to Cashel, support that? The Jack Cashel articles on that are, are very compelling. It's, it's clearly a What is the it's evidence? It's clearly a theory. What is the and evidence? And I said that I believe it. And what this is, is the an evidence? opinion. You're not going to shut down uh, dissent in this country. I'm I believe it to, to the that. core of my being. I'm to evidence the fact Read the Jack Cashel no. article. I believe, that, it, I believe the that it's a compelling argument. It's a very complex argument, but I would say the most... Mr. Ayers has denied doing this. You know, he's also said that he has. But he's denied but he's also ever said that he has. ghostwriting the autobiography. But he also has said that he has. He has see, also said that he has. Here we have a problem, you see, because we I'm have... I'm allowed to have we this have opinion. We have Shirley Sherrod, we have Rush, we have you... Rush, we not do people, anything. Uh, like uh, suggesting that they're ghostwriters. Do you see how there's nothing you're, wrong with you, having? When, if, if you've read through my entire book, you didn't read my book. Media Matters I, I, read it for you. Every sorry, single I've, thing I've marked every, it out. I've read every, the whole thing. Every I've single read the whole point thing. that you've offered is yeah. straight out of George Soros's funded and John Podesta's <laughs> led Media Matters. You no, are playing the role not. of a dupe of, of of John Podesta and Eric Bullard and Media Matters. Every time I appear on MSNBC, or a lot of times, there's Eric Bullard for Media Matters to be right there. Those no, are no, talking no. points straight Andrew, out of Media Matters. You and I, you and I are is, having a conversation no, about, not. about no, truth. No, we are. And Media you. Matters is over there. Uh, George Soros is sitting over there. And, uh, and Bill Ayers is sitting over here. Well, you, ha you, you have agenda-driven journalism. I support it. I support it. I support MSNBC. I support uh, uh, Keith Olbermann when he was fined by MSNBC because the implication that he was giving money uh, was somehow ethically wrong when everybody knows where he comes from. Everybody knows where you're coming from. I believe, <laughs> I believe in a back and okay, forth. Okay, Andrew. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. The prescription... travel all over the country picking crops. You know, like beans and grapes and lettuce and things like that. Me and my mother and my brother, Nikki was living out in the migrant shacks out by the tomato fields. The tomatoes had already been picked. 
and the other migrant workers' families had left. My father was out in Arizona looking for work, and we were waiting for him to telephone us to tell us where to go. And so I was getting nervous because we were running out of money, and I didn't know what to do. Angel? 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 The soldier bought? You hardly got any more money. What happened to the money that Papa left? We spent it. How are we going to eat if we ain't got money? I don't know, Aunt Jack's puppy, how are we going to eat? Don't you talk to your mother that way. A tu madre se le respeta, oíste? ¿Qué te crees? Eso es lo único que faltaba ahora. I'm sorry, mommy. Okay? I mean, I'm sorry. Don't cry. I'm gonna call Anne Marie in Texas. Maybe she knows where Papa is. I mean. What happened? The phone don't work. The phone don't work. How's Papa gonna call? Ay, Dios mío, ¿qué vamos a hacer ahora? Angel, you had to bring the man to fix the phone. Don't worry, Mommy, I get somebody to fix it. There's really something going wrong. Telephone office. How am I gonna call the telephone office if my phone's broken? Use somebody else's phone. Who? Who's? I don't know who's. Anybody else's? That's who's. Hey, Mister. Hey, Mister. Hey, beat it. I ain't gonna beat it till you come and fix my phone, and you ain't coming off that pole if you don't come and fix my pole. Where do you live? In the houses behind the tomato field. I thought all you people moved out a couple of months ago. No, some of us people are still here. And some of us people even got broken telephones. All right, I'll call my office and they'll send a man tomorrow. No good. What do you mean, no good? It's got to get fixed today. What's the hurry? The hurry is my father's supposed to call from Arizona. So call tomorrow. Ah, oh, come on, man. My mother's so crying, you're just gonna sit up there doing nothing? What is it with you? All right. I'll call the office and see if it's all right. Okay? It's pretty cold, eh? You go inside. It's cold inside, too. No heat? Not too much. Doesn't matter. Because soon as my father calls and says he got some work, We'll be leaving for Arizona. Big Joe. Big Joe from Mexico. Hey, Big Joe, you got any jobs around your house? Paint your garage, clean your attic, you know, that kind of stuff? No, no job, sorry. Hello, this is Joe Zunza. 
Give me a check on 555-9728. You call me right back. Yeah, how's the line look? Okay, thanks. Release the line. Okay, your phone is working. What's your name? Angel. What? Angel. No, look in heaven. Angel what? Angel Diaz. How you spell that? D-I-A-Z. C? D-I-A-Z. Hot coffee? No, thanks, man. I gotta go. Hope you get your call, Angel. After that, I didn't see Big Joe for a couple of weeks. And things were getting really bad. My father still hadn't called. So I got me a job after school and on weekends. You might say I went into business for myself. Big Joe. Yeah. That land out there is all yours? Yes, yeah, mine. You ought to put in some nice cash crops, you know, like lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, or something. Too much trouble. Too much trouble? Are you crazy? You know how much money you're losing out there? Never mind how much I'm losing. It's a waste, Big Joe. Real waste. All oh, that beautiful land just sitting out there doing nothing. Hey, what's that? What's what? That thing out there. Oh, that's my greenhouse. Your greenhouse? Yeah. My son Pete and I were going to build that greenhouse and grow some flowers. Flowers? Yeah, flowers. You know what you get for roses these days? A dozen roses, 15 bucks, sometimes more. Now that is a good cash crop. What happened? Pete joined the Navy. So why don't you get your wife to help you? I'm divorced. Then hire me, I'll help you. <laughs> no, that's OK. Forget it. 15 bucks a dozen? Man, if it was my place, you'd see roses coming out the chimney. So then I came around a few times a week, because Joe asked me to help him with some other things. Funny thing is, at first, I didn't like Big Joe too much. And I didn't like him because I didn't think he liked me. But then one time, Big Joe told me about how when he was in the war and they were fighting, and there was a lot of shooting. And these guys were getting killed and everything. And he told me about how he got so scared that all of a sudden he couldn't talk no more for a long time. I couldn't talk. I tried to yell. I couldn't yell. I couldn't do anything. I was frozen. Then I think when the main shooting stopped, we all got up. So when he told me that, I, I liked him because I figured that when someone tells you about how when they were so scared they couldn't talk, they must like you pretty good too.
pocket book, Joe. Mm. You know, I once read in this book about how there's millions of planets up in the sky. And the man that wrote the book, he said that there was people living on them. You think he's right? I don't know. I've never been there. Well, if there was people, what kind of people do you think they are? Probably some kind of weirdos. Hmm. Wouldn't it be funny that they were all Spanish people like me? You know, Puerto Ricans, Mexican, and they were real powerful. And they came down here, and millions of these flying saucers. And I'm gonna run out there, and I'm gonna go, hey, baby, que pasa? Habla puñol. I'm your friend, Angel. And they're gonna say, hey, Angel, baby. We're here to get all them bad hombres that are hurting the Spanish people. And I'm gonna say, yeah, well, I know who they are. But don't worry, it's with my friend Big Joe here. Cause he just looks me, you know, tu sabe? And they say, lead on, little Spanish brother. And I say, fire! Oh. <laughs> 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 You're crazy, kid. <laughs> I've been thinking. How would you like to help me finish building the greenhouse? The greenhouse? Yeah, we could start tomorrow. You mean it? Yeah, I mean it. If we make some money, I'll give you some of the profits. <laughs> Mommy! I got this job! Me and Big Joe gonna grow roses and we're gonna have a lot of money, Mommy, a lot of money. The kids I got for you to build the greenhouse. Now, you got to remember that I've been working in the fields and picking crops my whole life. And I hated it, hated it. But working with Big Joe was not like really working. It was more like playing around and having fun. I really liked it.
started to feel good about Big Joe and the Roses, the more I started to feel bad about my mother. My father still hadn't called, and my mother really missed him. I missed him too, but I was wishing he wouldn't call, at least not right now. What about me? I want to leave this place. I want to go to Aunt Maria. Mommy, we can't go to Aunt Maria's house now. That's probably gonna know where we are. I began to feel like a real rat. My mother was worried and crying. And all that time, the only thing I was really thinking about was the roses. We'll cut it. Come on. $4 a dozen for them. $4 a dozen? You gotta be kidding, man. You're gonna sell them out there for $15,000 and you're gonna give us four? Huh? Those are roses, not tomatoes, man. Let me handle it. I'm sorry. Look, man, he's trying to cheat us, man. I said let me handle it. Okay, you handle it. $6. I tell you what, I'll give you four fifty a dozen and I'll take all the roses you got. Let's go. $5 a dozen, that's it. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I thought, you know what we're going to do tomorrow morning? What? We're going to start building two more greenhouses. Two more? Yeah, that's what I said. We keep putting back the profits into the business. In a few years, we're really going to have something. What's the matter? I probably won't be here. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. So why don't you stay? Stay? Where am I going to stay? Right here. There's plenty of room. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I really want you to stay. What are you going to do, pick crops the rest of your life? No. No, I ain't. 
But, you know, I'm a family man. They need me. Let me tell you something. My father worked his whole life down in the mines, and when I was 14, I quit school and went down in the mines to work with him. I liked school. I was good in school, but I quit because I thought my parents needed me to help out. I spent six years down in the coal mines, eating coal dust and hating every minute of it, and hating my father for letting me do it. One day, on a day off, I was sitting in the park, and I was watching two kids who were playing. They were having a great time, just laughing and playing. And I tried to remember the time, the last time that I had felt like laughing, and I couldn't remember it. And I got really angry. I didn't want to work in the mines. I didn't want to work in the mines! All right, I had a responsibility to them. But what about me? I had a responsibility to me, too. So I ran home, packed a bag, kissed him goodbye, and left that town. And the funny thing is, my family didn't starve after I left. But I almost spent my entire life down in the mines just because I thought they would. I'd like you to think about that. I'll call you tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I'll see you. about what you said. Don't worry, I ain't gonna work in no mines. And I ain't gonna pick cross the rest of my life, neither. But I think my family needs me. Maybe they really don't, but that's the way I feel. So I gotta go with them. I think you should build your greenhouses anyway. But next time, Big Joe, don't take less than $7 a dozen. Cause those roses sure were beautiful. Thanks for wanting me for your partner. And I hope maybe I'll see you again someday. Real good friend, Angel. <laughs> 